back here now on the show to wrap it up with this last segment but before i do that i want to remind you guys for one last time on the show if you have any questions or comments you want to make during this live segment to use the tip and donations link you see on your screen gsmcpodcast.net by using that link your question will be brought up to me on my screen i can read it out loud and just get your guys's perspective and your um, feel on anything that i say during the show it's a massive help for not only this show but all the other shows across the network so if you would use the tip and donations link gsmcpodcast.net we would greatly appreciate it and we'd greatly thank you for using that with any of your questions or comments but like i mentioned austin rivers what did he say a few days ago that caused all this duress and just chaos really on social media around this topic that he brought up on the pat mcafee show on tuesday he went on there to talk and have a conversation with pat and the boys and throughout that conversation he brought up something his point of view on a topic that like i mentioned before caused a lot of discussion and debate on social media what he said exactly is I can take 30 players right now in the NBA and throw them in the NFL. You cannot take 30 NFL players and put them in the NBA. At the time of reading this, I saw Randy Moss responded to it. J.J. Watt responded to it. I saw Andrew Hawkins, Tyron Matthew respond to it all, as you could probably imagine, falling in line with um, not agreeing with this, falling in line with the NFL side of it, and just... So, like JJ Watt went at Austin Rivers. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was pretty brutal. Um, what he said, what he said on social media, and it is an interesting question. It is an interesting proposition to think about. Um, the way I thought of it and how I would interpret this, you know, he didn't really go into too many specifics. He just said thirty players in the NBA right now, throwing them in the NFL. He felt that they could do more in that than taking 30 NFL players and placing them in the NBA. And how I would analyze this debate, that question is, you know, which group can make more of an impact in a game right now if you were to throw them in there? That's how I sort of saw this question. And that's how I really came to the conclusion that I didn't agree with what Austin Rivers said. I agreed more on the NFL side of things that... I actually think if you took 30 NFL players that they would have more success in the NBA than if you took the 30 NBA players and have them play in the NFL. Now, with context, with um, some background to all of this, if you're talking a whole season, there's no chance any NBA player can make that transition and go through training camp and playing all those games, you know, There's all this talk about load management and missing a bunch of games in the NBA already. The amount of contact in the NBA and what they have to endure during throughout those whole games that they play throughout a whole season, I don't think really comes close to what NFL players do in six in 17 to 18 weeks in an entire NFL season with how just like I mentioned, NBA players missing already the amount of time that they do throughout injury Imagine them trying to withstand what they do in in a whole NFL season with training camp and the offseason included. I think that a lot of them would struggle with that. And also, on the other side of things, how I see it, NFL NFL players being more capable of making the switch. And if you're talking about one game, I still think NFL players are more impactful in that game, in one NBA game, than... NBA players would be in one NFL game. The issue with getting hit, knowing the timing, the plays, and the concepts, and also a lot of NFL players where NBA players would fit in on an NFL team. You know, I'm not throwing NBA players to be offensive linemen, to be defensive linemen, to be linebackers. I'm thinking skill positions to keep it relatively fair. 
And even so, if you threw NBA players in these skill positions at wide receiver, at tight end, at running back, a lot of the times, if you're not a running back or the quarterback, you're not touching the ball at all, and you're not making an impact just based on the nature of the game. You add that on to them trying to learn the plays and everything like that, the signals, the timing of it all, understanding zones and stuff like that. There's a lot more things that you have to go through if you're an NBA player to try and make an impact in one game, just based on the nature of the game and how dependent it is um, on the NFL side of things, I don't think it would go well for NBA players. And I think that's really where it comes down to. The NFL is just more of a dependent sort of sport where one, on the offensive side of the ball, if your offensive line isn't great, isn't one of the top offensive lines, You're not going to have success with your quarterback, your running back, your wide receivers if you have no time to do anything. So that's one thing. And then you move to the next level. If your quarterback has an offensive line, that's great. But he himself isn't like a great player, isn't a consistent and excellent type of player. The receivers aren't going to get the ball. They're not going to have great games. The running back might, but the receivers are very dependent on the quarterback. It's very much the ultimate team sport, like a lot of people say. Because of that, making the transition from an NBA game to the NFL and how independently um, and how independent the sport is on the NBA side, making that transition and now depending on everybody to do their job to have success, I don't think it would go well for NBA players. And again, like I said, getting hit, knowing the timing and everything like that, It's too dependent to just try and have success in one game. Whereas if you look at, on the other side, the side that I agree with, NFL players having more success in one NBA game, there's more ways, I believe, in an NBA game to make an impact through rebounds, setting screens, scoring, you know, the whole idea about getting fouled and how easily fouls are called now. Any player, any pro-level athlete, NFL, NBA players could probably play in an NBA game, and if they really tried and go out there and try to get fouled, they could probably at least get 10 to 12 points if they show some sort of ability to try and score the ball, plus trying to get fouled. They can easily probably score 8 to 12 points in an NBA game, plus all the other variables that I mentioned, defending, That's also a big part of it in one NBA game. I think NFL players wouldn't really struggle too much with that if they're just picking up one-on-one, man-on-man defense. Also, like I mentioned, on the flip side of the NFL, the NBA is more of an independent sport. You don't need all five guys to do something in order for you to get a first down, gain five yards, gain ten yards to help establish yourself on a drive. In an NBA game, if you have a guy scoring 40-plus and the rest of the guys aren't turning it over, aren't messing up the timing of the screen or anything like that, and they're scoring maybe 7 to 8 points, 9 points a game, you have a pretty decent chance of being efficient, being okay as an NBA team if you have one guy carrying the load over and over again at a consistent level. No shots here. Trying, uh, I'm not trying to throw shots here at anybody, but if you look at the Knicks, by some comparison, Jalen Brunson goes out there and scores about 40-plus a game in the playoffs, and they have one other guy scoring close to 20, and the rest of the guys are playing great defense, rebounding, offensive rebounds, setting great screens, playing defense. They're doing all right for themselves right now, and they don't need two to three guys, five guys on the offensive line doing their job. I think that plays a big part in it and why I see NFL players making that transition easier into the NBA game. That's just how I feel about it. I think just on the nature of the game, how it all plays out, I think you just can't help some things for NFL players and NBA players, both great groups of athletes. It'll be easier for them rather than the regular guy off of the street to try and make that transition, obviously. Uh, but just based on the nature of the game, the great athletes like Anthony Edwards, LeBron James, um, on the NFL side, you see guys like Miles Garrett going out there and playing basketball, C.J. Stroud, Devontae Adams, all these guys 
funny enough, played basketball and football throughout high school, some into college. If you look at a guy like Drake London, all these guys are very similar in athleticism, so you can see the comparison and why these conversations come up. But the way it's laid out, I think Austin Rivers, no surprise, he's leaning towards the sport he played, the athletes that he surrounded himself with, and seeing them up close. He hasn't been in an NFL locker room. He hasn't seen these athletes up close like that, um, like he would if he played in the NFL. So no surprise, no real um, hard feelings on how he fell on either side of this debate. But I just think how it all plays out, I think NFL players would find it easier to make that transition rather than NBA players moving over to the NFL. But let me know what you guys think on the points I made, where you fall in line with this debate. Is it easier for NBA players to play and make an impact in an NFL game, or is it easier for an NFL player to make the transition to the NBA and be more impactful on that side of the sport? Leave it in the comments and where, and how you guys feel about that. I gave you guys my thoughts, and I'm sure people are still going to talk about it for the next couple of days. But with them doing that, that wraps it up for me on today's episode. I want to thank you guys for listening to today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Like always, please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show, as well as following us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X for more of the network's content. If you want to see more of me and this show, go check out both YouTube channels, the GSMC Sports Network channel and the GSMC Podcast Network channel, where YouTube shorts are posted throughout the weekdays. You have the full live shows all recorded and posted on both channels, as well as individual segment videos. If you don't have enough time to watch an entire episode and just want to watch a specific segment, all those are on there on both channels as well. And as a reminder, tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more NFL and football conversations with me, Manny Maradiege, as your host. Thank you guys and signing off for right now. Hopefully, I see you guys all back here again with me tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go. To-